Reusability is the holy grail that will help make life multiplanetary, and no one excels at this better than SpaceX. In fact, they are poised to set new records for the reusability of Dragon, the most powerful crewed spacecraft currently in operation. So, how many times will Dragon be reused? And how does it outperform its competitors? Let's find out everything in today's episode. SpaceX's Dragon is currently the only U.S. spacecraft that's reusable and human-rated. And do you know what its reuse limit is? Five flights. As of now, SpaceX has four Dragon spacecraft in its fleet. One of them, named Endeavour, has hit the maximum number of reuses allowed, completing five flights as it embarks on the Crew-8 mission. So, does that mean it's retiring? No, not quite. The five-flight limit is more of a theoretical guideline. A spacecraft can exceed this limit if thorough inspections and evaluations prove it's still safe to operate. And that's exactly what NASA and SpaceX are doing, collaborating to determine Dragon's true maximum reusability. A press briefing on February 28th 2024 for the Crew-8 mission, Steve Stick, NASA's Commercial Crew Program Manager, provided some valuable insights. SpaceX is currently conducting deep inspections on each component of the Dragon spacecraft to figure out just how many flights it can safely handle beyond the original limit. There's lifetime cycle issues, where once you start using it the third, fourth, fifth time, you start finding different things. SpaceX is really good about identifying these issues quickly and then acting quickly to fix them, said retired NASA astronaut and former SpaceX executive Garrett Reisman, who now consults for the company on human spaceflight matters. Steek stated, right now, we're starting a process we call extended certification for Dragon. We'll be working on it throughout this year and possibly into next year to determine how long Dragon can keep flying. The number SpaceX and NASA are aiming for? 15 flights. Three times the current limit. That's totally insane. Once Endeavour returns to Earth, it will undergo a crucial evaluation. And this isn't just a standard checkup. It's a series of highly rigorous quality assessments. Every detail, from the heat-resistant exterior to the intricate control systems inside, will be meticulously analyzed to assess durability and its potential for future missions. Elon Musk has always envisioned operating spacecraft like commercial airplanes. This means high launch frequency, rapid turnaround times, and impressive reusability. You know, we don't fly a commercial plane once and then toss it away. But that's been the traditional model of the space industry. And it's exactly why space exploration has been so expensive. SpaceX is applying the same use-maintain-reuse philosophy seen in the aviation industry. And they are doing it so well. However, reusing spacecraft comes with its own set of challenges. Just like any complex machine, the parts of a spacecraft wear down over time especially in the harsh environment of space. Extreme temperatures, intense radiation, and micrometeoroids all take a toll. And when Dragon splashes down in the ocean, it's exposed to moisture and salt. So after each mission, SpaceX has to go through a process of replacing and servicing specific parts before the spacecraft is ready to fly again. Spacecraft are similarly designed with parts that require periodic replacement. While the core structure is built for exceptional durability, this allows spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon to have a long operational life across multiple flights, ensuring sustainability in space missions. Currently, SpaceX has four Crew Dragon capsules and is in the process of building a fifth. If the extended certification allows Dragon to fly 15 missions instead of the current five flight limit, Dragon could easily meet all crew transport needs for the ISS for a very long time, potentially for the entire lifespan of the station. This is pretty straightforward. Other spacecraft like Boeing's Starliner and Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser won't be ready to fly until at least next year. Meanwhile, crew rotation missions for the ISS have to stay on schedule. So it's no surprise that NASA will continue relying on SpaceX's Dragon for these missions. Now, I know some might argue that Dragon's reusability isn't all that impressive. For example, Starliner was originally designed with the ability to be reused up to 10 times without needing an extended certification. Plus, Starliner has the advantage of landing on solid ground instead of in the ocean like Dragon, which significantly reduces damage to the spacecraft and speeds up the turnaround time for maintenance. But no, Starliner doesn't really compare to Dragon. Sure, both Dragon and Starliner only reuse the crew module, but here's the thing. We can't just look at what gets reused. We have to consider the parts that get discarded. I'm talking about the Dragon's trunk structure and Starliner's service module. Those components are jettisoned after each flight, which is a critical factor in comparing their overall efficiency and reusability. Listen, the parts of the Dragon's trunk that aren't reusable include the solar arrays and the radiators. That's it. How about Starliner? The service module on Starliner includes not only solar arrays and radiators, but also critical engine and fuel systems. Specifically, Starliner discards its abort engines, used for emergencies, orbital maintenance engines, and about half of its RCS, reaction control system engines. Additionally, 
all four oxidizer tanks, four fuel tanks, and the entire system of valves, plumbing, and electronics that support these engines are also thrown away after each launch. You see the difference, right? While both Crew Dragon and Starliner have parts that need replacing after each flight, Starliner discards a lot more, especially when it comes to its engine and fuel systems. This makes prepping for the next mission significantly more expensive and resource-intensive. That's all about how the main components of the spacecraft are arranged. Most of Crew Dragon's critical systems are located in the crew module, the part that can be recovered and reused. Another drawback of Starliner is its complex design, which includes two sets of RCS reaction control system engines, along with their associated fuel tanks and plumbing. After the service module of Starliner is discarded, the crew module still needs the ability to maneuver in space, so it requires its own separate set of RCS. This not only adds to the complexity of the design, but also significantly increases operational costs. In fact, Starliner's tendency to discard a large amount of hardware after each mission is one of the main reasons its costs are so much higher than those of Crew Dragon. Boeing has been struggling to produce and replace the service modules for Starliner. Notably, Boeing had to replace four service modules just for two orbital missions. One of these was completely destroyed in a hot fire test incident back in 2018 at White Sands. Another module was damaged due to a stuck valve caused by humidity in Florida, leading to the entire valve, plumbing, and engine system being scrapped. Instead of repairing it, Boeing opted to build a new module, as that proved to be more cost-effective. So, once again, Starliner simply cannot compare to Dragon. And just to let you know, the price of a seat on Starliner is $90 million, higher than that of Russia's Soyuz spacecraft, which isn't reusable. Now let's turn our attention to NASA's Orion spacecraft. Despite being designed for ambitious deep space missions, Orion has a significant drawback when it comes to cost. A service module developed by the European Space Agency, ESA, alone costs around $300 million. Of course, this module, which includes complex and expensive systems like propulsion, power supply, and tanks for gas and water, will also be discarded after each flight. While Orion is said to be reusable, the big question remains, how many times can it actually be reused? used. Who knows? As of now, no Orion capsule has flown a second time. Although the Artemis Y mission was successful, numerous technical challenges remain unresolved. The most pressing issue is with the spacecraft's heat shield. NASA's team of scientists is working hard to address this problem, but it has significantly delayed the entire Artemis program. When will Artemis II, the mission to return humans to the moon, take place? No one has a definitive answer. Not only is there a delay in timelines, but the development costs for Orion have also skyrocketed. To date, the development costs for the Orion capsule alone have exceeded $20 billion. Clearly, developing a robust spacecraft for deep space missions like Orion is undeniably crucial. But the enormous costs and inefficiencies in reusability are turning it into a tough puzzle for NASA. This financial burden could easily render an exploration program meaningless. NASA is currently grappling with Orion and the Space Launch System, SLS, both of which are, quite literally, money-burning projects. The future of deep space exploration remains incredibly promising. However, to turn these space ambitions into reality, we must consider optimizing the reusability of hardware, managing costs, and ensuring operational efficiency. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.